In this tutorial, I'm going to show you all the steps required to create a variable product in WooCommerce. If you have any questions or comments throughout this video, please leave them down below. I try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. We will help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And now let's get started. To add a variable product to WooCommerce, we go into our WordPress dashboard, the WordPress admin. Under WooCommerce, find products. Hover over that, click on add new. And this is where we set up our variable product in its entirety. We're going to walk through every step right now. So I'm going to call the product macaroons, because that's what the product will be. We have to add a big description, not big, but it has to be a description that describes what the product is, because this is what people are going to see before they buy, when they're making a buying decision. So you want to give as many details as you can, details that are important for selling the product. Paste in a description that I found of macaroons. They're crispy, chewy, melty, just as sauce enhances its dish. A macaroon's filling enhances the taste of its shells, but a filling doesn't have to mimic the shells. In fact, contrasting fillings make a complex experience even more delicious. Get yours today. Something like that. Maybe explaining more of the technical aspects, depending on what your product is, you can explain more and give more information here. Down below, we want to choose our product data from this dropdown to be a variable product. This is the product type that allows us to choose variations. The biggest example you'll see online is t-shirts. Different colors, different sizes. People can pick from a drop-down which ones they want. We're going to have macaroons for something different, but it's going to be the same idea. Let's go to attributes. And under attributes, we set what the variations will be based on. For macaroons, I'm going to make it size and color. So I clicked on attributes on the left. I'm going to keep custom product attributes selected in the drop-down. Click on add. I'm going to call this first one color and we're going to give it some values separated by a pipe character. This character is above the enter key on most keyboards, Mac and Windows. You have to press shift to activate it as well. So let's add in here some colors, blue, yellow, red, green, and those are our colors. We're going to use these for variations. Check that box. It's going to be visible on the product page. Yes. And then click on save attributes. We're going to add another one. Keeping custom product attributes selected again, clicking on add to make a new one. Let's make this size and I'm going to make this small, medium, large. Click on use for variations, click on save attributes. Now we have our attributes created. Now we're going to click on variations and from this drop down, instead of clicking add variation, I'm going to click on create variations from all attributes. When you add variation, you can do it manually. For example, if you just had two colors of macaroon, red and blue, you just click on the attributes, make them red and blue, click on variations, keep add variation selected, click on go, and then we can choose any color, blue, any size, small, save changes, and that's our variation on the page. But when we have lots of attributes, like we currently have, it's easier to have WooCommerce make our combinations. We do that by choosing create variations from all attributes, then click on go, then we get a message saying it'll make variations if there's more than 50, or sorry, it can only do 50 per run, and that's okay. We don't have more than 50 in this case. Click on okay. 12 variations have been added, and here are the 12. And now we go in and add pictures and customize. I'm going to have different prices for the different sizes and an image for each of them. We click on any of them to open them, and then we add a price. Let's make the small one $5. I don't know how much these guys cost, but they're expensive. You can add weight, you can add dimensions, you can add shipping class. This is all set up for when you're shipping stuff out in the mail. So it adds the shipping when they go to checkout. I'm going to ignore that for now. Let's go to the medium. Let's make the medium $10. And let's make the large $15. I'm going to add those same prices for the yellow, red, and green. Just going to fast forward while I do that. All right, now all the prices have been added. And right now you must be thinking this is really boring. This is really boring technical stuff. You're going to see the magic on the front end once this is done. So bear with me. I'm going to click into each one again and add a picture. Click on this little icon. I'm going to upload my blue macaroon. In fact, I'll upload all of them right away. We have a blue, yellow, red, and green. In just a moment, we're going to upload our images here. But before we do, we want to make sure that they are compressed. 
And I usually use a program like Photoshop to compress images, but you can also do it online. To do that, let's just go to Google and let's search for online image compressor. And I use this one quite often, compressjpeg.com. And if you want to compress PNG files on here, just click on PNG. You can compress PDFs, SVG, and GIFs as well. And all you have to do is drag and drop a file right here. So let's see how this works. I'm going to get my yellow, blue, green, and red macaroons, drag and drop them before I do that. Right here it says 37.9 megabytes. Those four images, that is absolutely massive. And that's because they were downloaded from a stock image website. You don't want images that big on your website because it slows your load time down to a crawl. So we're gonna compress them. I'm gonna drag and drop all of these right into here. It's uploading them all. I'll just fast forward while it uploads and compresses. And here they're all uploaded, they're all compressed. We see there's about a 91% image compression on average. To download them, click on download. I'm gonna download all of them. It should put them right back in the same folder that we opened them earlier. And it does, it adds the word or the, it adds min to the file name. And if we compare the two, blue, min is 1.2 megabytes, that's still pretty big. And just blue is 11.9 megabytes. That's a huge difference. This can be made even smaller by reducing the size of the image. If I open this, we see this image is quite large. It's a big image. You probably don't need this big of an image for what you're doing. This image is absolutely massive. This is probably bigger than you need on your website. Unless you're a photographer, then you want to have big images like this. But to have them on a page that needs to load quickly, you need to have them smaller. And if you have an, a program like Photoshop, you can easily crop them. If you don't have a program like Photoshop, you could do this inside of Canva or inside of WordPress itself. The WordPress cropping is kind of hokey. I don't like it very much. So now that this image is compressed, if we go to a place called Canva, I know this is pretty convoluted, but you want to have your image size small. So we compressed them. Now we're going to go to Canva to shrink the size, and then we can upload them to WordPress. They can also have an image compressor on WordPress to compress them even further. And Canva is not loading. I don't know why. Let's just Google it. When I'm not using Photoshop, Canva is my favorite, favorite photo editing program. I'm going to click on Create Design in the top right. And I'm going to make kind of an arbitrary image size. I'm going to make them square. It's going to make them 400 by 400. Click on Create Design. And now I'm just going to drag these over one by one and just fit them to the size that we want. I do it one by one because Canva will delete the other ones in the background if you bring them over all at once sometimes. So there's a yellow one. Duplicate this, let's delete the yellow, let's put in our blue one. I'm just going to resize all these, I'm going to fast forward as I do it because you don't want to watch me doing this stuff, it's pretty boring. You get the idea. Hey, there we go, red one. And now we can go ahead and download all these. We can download them as PNGs or as small file size JPEGs. I'm going to choose JPEG. If you have the Pro account, you can choose different sizes, different qualities. I do not have the Pro account. I'm going to keep all four pages selected, click on download, and all this convoluted image compression is all in the name of faster websites. I'm sorry to say it is required. Let's double click this zip file to open it, and now we have our new files. This one is now 14 kilobytes, 31, 22, and 39, which makes it load on your site a whole lot faster. So I'm just going to rename these files. They're all renamed. Now these we can upload to our website. Let's go back to our website, select all these, upload them. Now they're all the same size. They're all small. It's all fantastic. I'm going to add an alt text for each of them. Call this yellow macaroon. That's good for people who have disabilities, who might need screen readers, who can't see very well. And then their screen reader reads the alt text of images to tell them what it is. And search engines use titles to help them identify what an image is. So you want to fill in the alt text and title for every image you have. Let's call this one Red Macaroon.
green macaroon and blue macaroon. So after all of that, I forgot which image we're actually working on right now. I think it's the uh, blue, I think it's the blue. Click on set image variation, it is the blue, small. So now I'm gonna go through the blue, the yellow, the red, and the green, and just add the appropriate thumbnail for each of them. I'm gonna use the same thumbnail for all the sizes because it's basically the same macaroon, it's a different size. I'm gonna keep all the same image for all of them. You could have a different image for each one if you wanted. I'm gonna keep them all the same. I'm gonna fast forward as I do it so you can see what I'm doing, but it won't take too long to finish them all. All the images are added. Click on any one of these, you see the image. And there it is. And I'm gonna save our work. There's more to do still, but I like to just save stuff as I go, just in case something goes wrong. So I'm gonna click on save the draft, I'm not gonna publish it yet. We'll publish it when we're all done. And let's scroll down to our short description. I'm just gonna copy and paste this one from here because it's not very long. Put that in there. We're gonna add a product image. I'm just gonna pick one of these images, the nicest one. I think this blue one's quite nice. Have that as a product image. I'm gonna choose a gallery. And the blue one, because it's our main product image, it'll automatically be part of the gallery. So I'm not gonna choose it again. I'm just gonna choose the other ones. I'm gonna hold control down, command on a Mac. These little checks appear. We've selected all of these to unselect one. Just hover over the check mark, it becomes a minus. Click the minus and it goes away. So we have these three selected. Click on add to gallery, add them down here. I'm going to add a new category. I'm gonna call it macaroons. Make sure just the macaroons category is checked. You can also add tags if you want to better organize your site or just leave without tags. Tags are important for big websites with large amounts of stuff, not so important with smaller ones. I'm gonna click on save draft and then click on preview. We're gonna see what this looks like. Here is our macaroon page. I think it looks pretty awesome. Click on any one of these, changes the image. That is pretty slick. And over here, we have our pricing. $5 to $15. This pricing is based on the variation. So it takes the cheapest variation up to the most expensive one. And that's what the pricing is based on. Here it shows our description. We can choose a color. For example, I want the blue, uh, medium, $10. Or maybe I want the yellow, large, $15. You notice the, the slide or the image also changes to the one you choose. I want the green, small. $5. And then on any one of those, people can click add to cart and it puts it in their cart. So if I wanted the green small, I'll just add that to cart. Here I have notifications saying it's been added. That's great. Let's take the yellow large, add that to cart. And let's take the blue medium. I'm going to take five of these, add to cart. And now all of those are in our cart, which we'll check out in just a second. First, let's go to the very bottom. This is the short description that we added at the bottom of the page editor. And this is additional information, the variations, other info, using different plugins, you can add more stuff here. And here people can leave reviews if they want. So that's fantastic. We have our category listed here. Here it shows SKU NA. We don't have one set currently. If we had one set, we would be able to manage our stock using the SKU number. If you are selling a product that's the same or similar as a different website, you can use the same SKU number because sometimes people use a SKU number in Google to find the same product elsewhere. So you can potentially rank for the SKU number if you did it that way. Or you can make up your own. It's gonna make one up. That's our SKU number for the macaroons. I'm gonna click on manage stock, stock quantity. Let's just set that at 10. You can allow back orders or not. So if you're out of stock, people can still order it. They'll just be told it's not in yet. And when it does come in, then it'll be shipped to you. So you can have back orders as do not allow, allow but notify customer and allow. And the low stock threshold, when the stock comes to this level, whatever you enter here, let's say two, which is their example, you will get an email saying you're low on stock for whatever product it is. If we go to the variations and open any one of these, we can have individual SKUs for each individual color or variation, which is probably what you wanna do, instead of going for the general SKU like I did here. You can go into each variation, add a SKU, and manage stock for each one, 
and have a stock quantity and back orders for each individual variation. So those are the two ways you can add SKU numbers. And when you add SKUs, like I said, you can manage inventory and keep your shop much more organized. So let's check out our cart. Click on view cart up here. If this button's gone for whatever reason, there's usually a cart icon up in the top. I'm using the Astra theme with a demo site, a free demo site, and it just has a cart right here. When we hover over this little shopping bag, I can go to view cart and see the whole thing. And these are all one product, one variable product is what we use to create all these different variations, different prices, different sizes, different colors, different whatever you want. Whatever the variation is, you can use a variable product to create it. If you wanna make your WooCommerce shop even better, check out this playlist I put together right here all about WooCommerce tips and tricks and helping you make a better shop. So check out that playlist. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.